we don't label food. There's no such a thing. A cheat meal is being sold because they gave you a restrictive diet for the entire week. And now you feel the need to cheat. Hi, I am Alok and I'm your host at Pitarobic. Welcome to Fitness Pro Chat, the podcast by Fitarobic. Welcome to Fitness Pro Chat by Fit Aerobic. If you're looking to improve your health and well-being to lead a healthy, fit, and fulfilling life, whether you're an amateur or a professional athlete, this podcast is for you. The biggest challenge in any fitness and nutrition program is to sustain it. People start, they struggle, and often go back to their old lives feeling dizzy. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you all. Let me welcome Rachel Piparno to Fitness Pro Chat with Fit Aerobic. She's an inspirational mom who has lived in Paris, studied in Canada, and moved to L.A. after her marriage. She's a certified fitness trainer, nutrition expert, and started her business in 2019. Rachel is extremely passionate about helping young women and moms to transform their health, bodies, and mind and create a healthy lifestyle. Welcome to the show, Rachel. Thank you. Today, Rachel and I will discuss how young women and moms can transform their lifestyle to live a fulfilling life. Let's begin our show, Rachel, with the first question. Can you please share a bit about your journey into fitness and as a health transformation coach? Yeah, of course. Well, it started after I had my first kid, actually. So after I had my first daughter, she's now 10 years old, I realized like she was only like one and a half, two, and she started being active. You know, a kid started being active around two. They call it a terrible two. So she started being more active. And I realized I could, I could seriously not keep up with her. And it scared me. It scared me because I had no energy. Like, I also had a day job, worked all day. And after work, I just, I would lay down and I could not move. And I was only 26 at the time. I'm like, dude, why am I so tired? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, I cannot take care of a kid. Like, she was approaching two, two, two and a half, three years old, and I could just not uh-huh. take care of her. So I started exercising. I had said to a friend, I'm like, what do I do? I have no energy, and I'm only 26. Like, this is not normal. She told me, you know what? Just start exercise. And I'm like, but I, I find it boring. She's like, what do you mean? She's like, well, I don't like the cardio machine. It's like, that's not exercise. Go pick up some weights. Do, like, a strength training program. I was like, oh, that's possible. And so that's when I joined like one of those apps okay, and okay. I started exercising every day. I was like, you know, what? 30 minutes, minimum four days a week. And that's how all of a sudden, like I had more energy than ever. All of a sudden, my friends will call me at 8 p.m. be like, hey, we're going up to eat. Are you in? And I'm like, dude, I have more energy. Let's go on a hike after the dinner. <laughs> and who is this person? So I discovered how to basically like my energy and be that, uh-huh. not the energized mom that my daughter needed. And that woman, the young woman that I was, I was only 26 years old. I mean, my life is not just going to end because I just had kids, right? Yes. Hey, I was going through your website and I read about 10x your metabolism and energy in less than 10 days. So does this have any connection with your story? Well, kind of, because after 10 days... I felt incredible. And okay. I was like, if I could 10x my energy and productivity in 10 days, it really was what it was. Like I went from a person who was tired, exhausted. Like also like my confidence was really low. I felt like, I just felt like a failure at it. Like I was not able to be that energized mom I was. And I was like, almost like done with life. It's like, I'm 26, but I feel like I'm 60. And uh-huh. I was like, I needed that in and definitely like after 10 days I was like dude I cannot like I'm never stopping I took my photo my progress photos I remember and I was like doesn't even matter I didn't have that much weight to lose I was 110 pounds right but I was like I just want to transform my energy I want to transform my body I'll be strong so that was the whole inspiration True. there one of the things which you talked about uh, your self-inspiration and mindset plays a very big role in uh inspiring self uh, to take a step forward. So what exactly is your thoughts on the importance of mindset when it comes to achieving a transformation? Yeah, so your mindset's your driver, okay? So it's like the driver's seat. You're driving somewhere, and without a driver, you're not going anywhere, right? The car's just staying exactly where it is. Absolutely, yes. 
So the mindset, your driver is like the way you're going to think about your transformation, the way you're going to think about your life, the way you're going to think about growing the growth mindset, as opposed to a fixed mindset. And really the bottom line is realizing that this is not like a thing just to lose 10 pounds. This is not just a thing so you can look better. True. So you can fit in smaller clothes. This is the worst way to go about it. The mindset that we need to have is that big mindset. Think about it. Five years from now, what kind of person do I want to be? What do I want to create with my life? Right? Ten years from now, what do I I want to... Like, what kind of... Am I the value in my life? Am I I a liability for my whole family? Right? Are they worried about me? Or do they know that if they need something, this is the perfect person they come to because they know I'm self-sustained. And this is all with mindset. Like you gotta, you gotta have that, that, that fire that this is not just for, Oh, in a month from now, I'm going to do great for that wedding. Cause I lost 20 pounds by starving myself. No, it's 15 years from now. When I have grandkids, we're going to go out for an entire day and I will, I will go on and on and I will not be tired. I won't be Absolutely. able, I won't, I won't need to take breaks. I'll be that, that grandma that can power through everything. I'd be that person yes. who actually created an empire, not destroyed every, not destroyed their health because of the kind of lifestyle I live. The, everything we do today has an impact in the future. Everything we do today for our health, like I always talk about my clients, like, is this big jar of marbles. Uh-huh. And every time you do something, and every month you empty the jar, and every month you go back like, hey, I did a workout today. That's a marble. Oh, I drank a hundred ounces of water today. That's another marble. And you just keep filling that marble jar the month and you empty it out. Here we go again. This is how you build a life of impact as opposed to just not knowing where you're going, thinking you're just doing it for like 20 pound loss. Who cares about how much weight you lose? That's bonus. It will happen regardless. You're going to live that life. The True. weight loss, the fat loss will happen. The energy will happen. Everything you desire well, I think opportunities will come running through you. You're going yes. to be a successful human being regardless. So the analogy with which you talked about of the jar and marbles, and I'm sure during this journey, uh, because health transformation usually is a, is a journey. It's not an overnight thing. I'm sure most people make mistakes. So how exactly they can avoid certain common mistakes, uh, which usually is made by Almost everyone who wants to embark on this transformation journey. We are all human beings. We all make mistakes. So that's normal. There's nothing wrong with you. If you do make mistakes, this is welcome to being a human. <laughs> you know, this is normal. Absolutely. Yes. But yes. the biggest mistake that I see people do is they think that they, this is just a four month thing. Uh, this is oh. just a 10 day detox. This is just a Way true. year on the, of Optivia. This is just something that's <laughs> short term. I feel like most people see it as short term and then they're super deceived. And like, this did not work for me after four months. And it's like, so I always ask, what didn't work? What yeah. didn't work? Like when I didn't lose the 50 pounds, I want to lose. I'm like, well, this has been four months, you said, right? Like, well, yeah, but I only lost like five pounds. It's not working. I was like, yeah. first off. Go on and celebrate yourself for losing that five pounds. Most people actually struggle to do that. So really like being grateful for the things that are happening for the journey. Like so many people are like dismissing the fact that a year ago they would binge it every single day, but now they only binge it once a month. But they only see the fact that they do binge it once a month. So they're a freaking failure, but actually they're not. They are progressing. They're making massive leaps. But when we ain't got so much on those little mistakes and we make them, oh my God, this is my life and I'm a binge eater and I've got pre-diabetes and, and I just can't stay consistent because I will skip the gym two days in a row. I'm like, this, you're a human being. Get it wait together. To, to. One of the things is staying consistent. And I'm sure you must have devised a few ways in which you help your clients to stay consistent. So it would be great to have certain tips from you on how people can stay motivated and consistent in their transformation journey. Sure. Okay. So motivation is not a thing. That's number one. Motivation is just 
Something that's happening sometimes. Sometimes you'll be motivated, most time you won't be. Don't wait for motivation, build the discipline. How do you build discipline with the consistency, right? Yes. And consistency doesn't mean every day. Consistency means this is not your life. You are committed to your health and fitness. So that's uh, what I speak about consistency. The one simple tip that I give my clients is called standards over schedule. I give my clients a standard to work out four days a week and eat free meals, free balanced meals a day. Other than that, I mean, of course, they have their step, step goals, depending on their goals. They also have their water goals, sleep. That's important. Uh But the most important, the standard of I'm going to work out four days a week, regardless. I could do more if I want to, but there's a minimum of four days. So if it's Friday today and they only work out three times and today's the last day of the week or Saturday is is a day of rest, well, they're going to work out on Friday. I don't care when, I don't care how long, they're going to make it happen. And this is how you do consistency. This is how you use discipline to fuel your life. So Devin, I would say it's very inspirational to hear this because most people do not follow a typical regime. Whenever they start this, they start to find excuses. They try to find ways to cut uh, short their programs and start complaining. And sometimes it could be because they are overloaded with certain information because they come across a lot on the internet and then they go across social media and they come across a lot of information is out there. So that also kind of acts as a demotivating distraction for most people. Amid all these sea of information that's there, how do you uh, help people identify what's right for them? Yeah. So I'm going to go back to what you said about the, uh, the, the fact that people like have so much information. Number one, we call this here infobesity because uh-huh. it's called you're filled with information. It's, Absolutely. Yes. You know, infobesity. So when I, my clients start working with me, I tell them to forget whatever it is that they learned before. I beg them to do that because it's so important that you start fresh because the journey that we Cell really is based back to by science. It's all about tracking yes. your macros. It's all about doing strength training. It's all about creating a new life. So if you're going to think about, but my grandma said intermittent fasting, but my auntie said Atkins diet is all the thing. Oh, my mom's on world weight witcher. And if you're going to do, and my friend said avocado is fattening. And I'm like, if you're going to go uh, and listen to all those people and other social media and you are lost. You're already lost. You, you can't move. You're too filled with information that is irrelevant anyway. So I tell them to forget whatever it is. And of course, whatever it is that they are doing, it needs to be sustainable. That's it. That, that the secret sauce. Like if it's not sustainable, don't do it for a month. Don't do it for 12 months. Don't do it at all. Like you need to be able to sustain this lifestyle. I know that what I'm doing today, I can do until I'm 95 years old. And I'm very Absolutely. proud of it. And there are a lot of programs out there to get transformed, say, in 21-day uh, transformation programs and all of that. Some of these programs are very, very restrictive as compared to having a sustainable, balanced diet programs or fitness programs. So how do you assist your clients in choosing between a restrictive diet versus a sustainable, balanced nutrition program so that they can sustain it or they can make it part of their lives. Okay. You're saying that basically all those programs selling the five day detox, the 21 day transform. Yes. So there's something so important for anybody who is in the market of, of, of hiring a coach or hiring a trainer, yes. you got to talk their language. If I tell them, Hey, Absolutely. this is going to be five year journey. Well, I'm going to have zero client. But if I can tell True. them that in 10 days, I'm going to help them achieve this goal. Well, now we're talking by tides. I know that yes. in 10 days, if somebody's actually going to do the program and none of my programs are restrictive because I don't believe in that, there is never, we're never cutting carbs, we're never cutting processed food. It's not what we do here. We're very yes. um, catered towards a busy mom. And busy moms are going to be around processed food all the time, the kids snack. They're going to be around ice cream every weekend, pizza every weekend. How do we tell those people, hey, you can't have the dairy or you also can't have the dough and you can't have the ice cream? Well, sorry, this is the kind of plan you're on. Yeah, right. They're going to do it for a very small time. They're going to quit afterwards. That is never the point. We want people to be able to 
create a lifestyle that's all inclusive and extremely, extremely sustainable. Something again that they can do for years on, they can build upon and they don't have to ever take a break of yo-yoing. I always say like the only way you, um, you go back with this is if you quit, if you decide that, you know what, you don't want to do it, sure, but sure. it's not because it's too hard because there's always a way to make it happen. And like you said, excuses, you said people make excuses why they can't. You can either make excuses why you can't and be yes. that victim in that victim mode. You can create it for yourself. Gosh, no one's going to do it for you. Either you do it on your own terms, not because you've got diabetes, not because you've got high blood pressure, not because you're in menopause. You do it right now. You use this time to create a better life for yourself. Or you yes. be that victim that just complains, makes excuses. And this is, this is not a place for that. We don't help women who just love making excuses. This is Higher Fitness Academy is not even a place for that. So we would tell those people, I am sorry, I cannot help you. So could you also share some success stories that you help your clients in transformation? And what were the key factors that contributed to their transformation? Of course, I love this question. Okay, so one of my, uh, one of the success stories of one of my clients, actually, she came to me after having a baby, nine months. Uh -huh. can, kid was nine months, I think. And she was like, you know what? I've been 100 pounds my entire life. And okay. right now I'm 145 pounds and I just uh -huh. cannot shed this baby weight. It is making me crazy. I don't fit in any clothes. I don't feel comfortable to go out. I have no energy. Please tell me there's something you can help me with. And she didn't even have a timeline. She's like, help me get back to myself. And so I said, so what's your goal then? How much weight do you want to lose? She's like, I want to lose 10 pounds. I'm like, are you sure? You see, you're, you've been 100 pounds your whole life. You sure you don't want to be 110, 115? Like, well, that's not, I don't know, that's, that's possible. And guess what? After four months, she shed 35 pounds in the most sustainable way possible by eating more food. We realized she wasn't eating enough. This is why she was at that place. The minute she started eating more Absolutely. food, everybody was like, great, she's eating. Let's shed the fat. And she shed and shed and shed. Her stomach went from being like completely pottering out, but opening back being flat. But also she gained so much muscle. So it's not like she lost a bunch of muscle. Most journeys in four months, if they lose 35 pounds, they lost a bunch of muscle. If anything, yeah. her metabolism went up. She gained muscle. She looks fit. And then after that, she decided to invest again for 12 months to work with me just because she was like, this is the best I've ever felt. I am ready for next step. I'm ready for this identity shift you're talking about. And it was amazing. It was not just the weight loss. She was happy again. She had energy. She just found her life. I felt like she, she got her life back, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. It was really wonderful to learn about this kind of transformation that you have helped. So one question that pops up my mind is about cheat meals. And that's the most important or critical question which most clients would ask any coach how to deal with cheat meals because Saturdays and Sundays or weekends are for cheat meals. So what are your thoughts on this concept and what do you advise your client to uh, treat without derailing their progress? Yeah. So I don't think about food as cheat, junk, treat. We don't label food. Um, there's not such a thing. You, if you come in with a thing like, am I going to be able to have a cheat meal? It's because you're coming with, again, some information you've heard. That yeah. Like, Having yeah. a cheat meal is super helpful, blah, 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 blah. That's all BS. A cheat meal is being sold because they gave you a restrictive diet for the entire week. And now you feel the need to cheat. Yes. But that's not what we do here. You can have your favorite, most delicious comfort food on a daily basis. Therefore, Absolutely. there's not no need to treat yourself or to cheat on whatever because you're good. Like you're actually True. good. True. There is nothing that's off limit when you're tracking your macros. Therefore, there is really no... And, and to be honest, a lot of the time with those cheat meals, what I ends up doing is 
the weight you were going to lose because of the deficit you created the whole week, you just gained it back with that cheat meal. So now you're maintaining, yes. you can't make progress. I don't believe in that. I mean, really wonderful way of helping out your clients. So how do you help them in dealing with stress? Because obviously health transformation sometimes can be stressful as well. Yeah. So w- number one thing I always say, like, especially for someone who doesn't work out, when it comes to me, I say, hey, by exercising, you're going to alleviate a lot of your stress. So this whole journey is a stress uh-huh. relief. Also, they know at the end of the day that they actually did something for themselves. They know sure. that at the end of the day, they took care of themselves. So that commitment, because everybody, everybody wants this from, nobody wakes up be like, today I'm going to screw up my health by eating crap and not moving. <laughs> no one does that. People wake yeah. up and be like, today's going to be the day. I'm going to, cr- I'm going to work out. I'm going to make myself something healthy. Then something happens and they don't do it. But nobody actually wakes up being like, today is the day where I'm going to screw up my entire health journey. No one does that. Something happens and they end up falling off. But the thing is, when especially when it comes to moms, because this is the people I, I help, self-care is so important. And when I say sure. self-care, I also mean self-love. Take the Epsom salt bath. Take a nice walk outside. Book yourself that massage. You know, eat something nourishing, like a soup, like something loving towards yourself. So you alleviate your stress. There's also breathing methods. There's also letting yourself be, letting yourself know that, hey, I love you. Like inner child work. Yeah. Also, we do some inner child work because there is inside of every single one of us, there is a child that needs love. And if Absolutely. we're able to do that for ourselves, if we're able to hold that space, then we're going to be fine. The stress won't consume us. But of course, like doing this, um, yesterday a client texted me. She's like, so I had to miss your mindset call on Wednesday. But guess what? It was for good reasons. Like, okay, what was that? She's like, I got myself a pedicure and I feel alive. And I was like, <laughs> yes, this is what I say. You know, like go, go and take care of yourself. Yes. Go and take care of yourself. You're doing so much for everybody else. Go take that time to relax and pour into you. Wait, wait, I think self-love is extremely important in any transformation, whether it's health transformation or life transformation. Self-love is very important because that keeps up the spirit high and people feel motivated always to try out new things and to incorporate changes that are required to achieve their goals. So from that, one thing which comes to my mind as a question is setting goal is always very crucial. And obviously, there are certain setbacks and plateaus. Most health transformation journeys have plateaus. And people often get dejected when they reach a plateau because things don't move according to their wish. So how exactly you help them overcome these challenges and allow them to move forward? We celebrate plateau, actually, here. Oh, wow. And the reason why is because plateau is a really good thing, actually. Plateau means you lost weight yes. and your body is sustaining that. You lost weight and your body is now gaining back. It's sustaining it. So plateau is a Absolutely. beautiful thing. There are many ways to break plateau, but it's also something to celebrate. That's, that's, I would say it's a very brilliant way to take a step in the right direction. Because most people would get demotivated, but this way... Uh, There is a motivation. Yes, things are moving in the right direction. And that's why we have reached a stage which is called plateau. It's a very positive uh, way to look at things. So one other thing is sleep. And I have had conversations with other experts as well in the past. And they have talked about sleep in detail. So I would want to understand more from the importance of sleep and recovery during health and fitness journey. I believe that sleep is actually number one. I say, and my coach always said, you cannot beat biology. You just can't. So if you're tired and if you're not sleeping and if you're not recovering, you cannot progress. So using you cannot beat biology, I use it all the time when you're kind of like, yeah, well, I didn't do this. I didn't do that. I'm like, what's up? How long did you sleep last night? Yeah. Well, I I had a really bad night. Okay. Well, we cannot beat biology. Please go, go take a nap or get really good sleep tomorrow. Yes. And start prioritizing your sleep. 
There are many ways to do that. But again, it comes down to self-love, realizing that you're not a freaking machine, realizing that you do need rest and you are not top liver. Go to bed at a good time. Don't just crawl on your phone or use that time to watch endless seasons of Netflix. There are times for that too, but not instead of sleep. Sleep is extremely important. Eight hours minimum. We have also think about it. Like there are people out there who are struggling to stay asleep, struggling to fall asleep. But like you're lucky if you're lucky enough to be able to be that person that when you hit the sack, you actually fall asleep. Take advantage. Like don't take it for granted. So right now, if we log into a social media channel, we see a lot of ways in which people can get demotivated, especially looking at others, someone having a great physique or or maybe uh, someone trying to do different things in life, which may be very, very colorful. So that obviously affects the healthy self-image of anyone. Uh, how do you address these concerns with your client? Cooperation is the fifth of happiness. One thing that my teacher taught me when I was a kid is if you are going to compare yourself to someone else and wish upon to be them and be jealous and want yeah. to be them because of what they have, maybe a beautiful house, maybe a beautiful car, maybe a beautiful physique, regardless, this is a life lesson. You must take all of it. Maybe that person is dealing with chronic depression. Maybe this person has a really sick mom or dad. Maybe this person True. is really poor. Maybe this person, whatever it is, you're taking it all. Not just a good physique, not just a nice car, not just a cool house. All of it. God gave every single one of us tools and struggles, but he also gave us the tools to deal with that. Life is not yes. like all rainbows and butterflies. Like we all have issues that we need to work through. And if we're going to start comparing ourselves, oh, I wish I looked like that and I wish I, I was as strong. I wish I was as motivated, as disciplined, as pretty, as blah, 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 successful. And we're using energy. Like we, you're, we're wasting energy. What well, that energy could be towards creating a life of impact for yourself, something of Absolutely. you that like you can take credit for that. So there's no room for it. There's just no room for it. Absolutely. And I just want to add to that is uh, from my own experience, I always believe my objective is to improve on myself every day. So it could be an inc incremental improvement. The more I improve from yesterday to today, that's my achievement on a day-to-day -day basis. So another question that I have is about self-compassion and self-love in a successful health transformation. So how do you encourage your clients to embrace these concepts? I believe that these are the concepts are incremental. It's not something that you can stuck on force on anybody because self-love is developed. Yes. Self-love is developed through the journey that you're living. I remember at the beginning of my journey, I fight for self-love. I believe that I loved myself. I believe that I was doing this for me, but I think that was outside. I want to look a certain way. I wanted to prove myself to others that I was worthy, right? And as I went on, this caught up to me and I started feeling unhappy, even though I reached the, all the goals, right? And the reason why was because I, I, I was lacking that self-love. I wasn't celebrating myself enough. And so the way we help our clients with is that they, have, they all have a gratitude journal where every single day they do, hey, 10 things I'm grateful for today. And they actually elaborate on what they're grateful for. Yeah. And one thing I say, like at least doing every month or every six months, every quarter, um, go back to like when you were one year old. Say, tell me five things you were grateful when you were one year old. Then let's just jump to 10 years old. Let's just jump to 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 and start. And then you're going to be on a high. But trust me, if you do that, if you go back to when you were one year old, be like, hey, I've got parents who loved me. I've had... Like whatever it was, like it, it could be like, hey, I had my milk, you know, that's what I had <laughs> when I was one years old. And, yeah. but it's like, and it makes you appreciate life a lot more and it makes you also go off path you've come. Brilliantly put together how exactly identify five things. It's 
a specific milestones in life that you would love to start self loving yourself with that we come to end of today's podcast and i have one final question for you today what are your favorite pieces of advice or mantra that you would want to share with everyone to keep them motivated and focused on their journey to a healthier and happier life that's a hard question <laughs> i would say start now that's my first one okay. start uh-huh. now if you're contemplating starting just just do it do it right now because momentum comes and goes but if we take action on the original thought it doesn't have to be perfect now like that's number two yeah. like perfection don't aim for perfection you don't need a perfect pair of tennis shoes you don't need the, all the weights i started when i started exercising i was curling water bottle i was like <laughs> hey, hey let's go you know like that was my yeah. first i didn't amazon said it's coming in a week whatever yeah. i'm not getting a week to start exercising there are water bottles in the kitchen let me curl what i can so just taking yes. action taking messy action towards your goals and this again something you can do everywhere not just with your health and fitness you put that towards your life put that towards a career if you want to become a personal trainer let's just say buy the course don't be like okay next month when i get my paycheck i'll buy the course because we all got credit card put it on a credit card pay it over time you got this just take action cool. right now and make sure it's not perfect action it's messy action because nothing is built on perfection life is a work in progress wait right it's brilliantly put together life is work in progress take action and let it be messy it, it shouldn't be perfect every time just keep building on it and make it perfect thank you so much rachel for joining me today on this show amazing i really enjoyed this podcast thank you so much that's a wrap Thank you for listening to Fitness Pro Chat by Fit Aerobic. We hope you had key takeaways from today's episode and learned something new. Don't forget to download and subscribe so you don't miss the next episode and leave us a rating and review on your favorite platform. In the meantime, reach out to us on Instagram at Fit Aerobic or through our website, fitaerobic.com. And remember, failures will only make you strong and better learn. Take care, stay healthy, and live a fulfilling life with Fit Aerobic.